which is not you cannot put this guy away. Rum ham. So Woody, first two time winner. Yes. Clyde. Second. Second. You're right. Winner? Won the invitation. It was actually Clyde has never actually won a super magical cup. These bracketed events. Yeah, he was he's only invited top through top fours. He's yep. top four and top eighted, but he's never actually in top sixteen. But he's yeah. never. M- I don't think he's ever made the finals or won one. So can, yeah. so Clyde, wow, after a yeah. week of tournament play, has really upped his game up yeah. against another, you know, kind of new name stud yeah. in the scene, the t- trainer Chris. So I'm really excited to see how this goes. Uh, let's get game one of the finals started he's right now. with the Lava Hound. <laughs> Got to get there, yep. right? Got to open with Lava Hound. And again, Inferno Tower is going right. to be the interaction that he needs to watch out for. Let's see what else we've got here. So, unfortunately, Trainer Chris does not have a very air-heavy deck, right? Mm-hmm. Like, minor, mini P.E.K.K.A. Like, there's no Musketeer, there's no yeah. Archer, Spear Goblins, that kind of thing. And now that I'm mentioning it, Spear Goblins kind of fell out of favor. What happened yeah. to that card? We Spear haven't seen Goblins any all day. really... I mean, they just... Even when you get them to work, the fact... They get stopped by Zap so often. Yeah. And then even when you get them to work, they're not as... They're not as big swinging as Goblins. Are, sure, sure. You know? So, wow. Big call out. Uh, so, let's, let's see... Let's see if he can do it. He did it once. Yeah. Uh, last game, let's see if he can do it again. Trainer Chris, though, no chump, right? No pushover. Yep. Yep. All right. All right. Boop. Here we go. So we'll keep Lava Hound. Actually, we'll keep these up right as is. Yeah. The one thing I really like about Princess against Lava Hound decks is besides you get a lot of shots on the Lava Hound, theoretically, they're pretty good against the pups. The, mm-hmm. the big splashes can hit pups two at a time, but of course, by the time the Lava Hound blows up, it's like... Didn't your princess die to a poison by now yeah, or something? Yeah, yeah. But it is it is a threat. That oh, the defense. We've seen that over and over again. So if you're struggling with minor, if you've been playing the last tournament week and wondering, like, oh, my God, what do I do about all these minor decks? You've seen some clinics today on how yeah. to defend. Place your collectors in the middle. Be ready with your mini P.E.K.K.A. And you can guard your collectors and still be able to pump up all that extra elixir. I love these minions on Clyde's side. We said there wasn't a lot of anti-air stuff in Trainer Chris's deck. Yeah. Those minions are going to be a very, st- oh, oh, very nice. strong defense. Uh, just because they're going to counter almost any push oh, wow. that Trainer Chris can put this together. This is one of the first games we've seen where players are just pumping up. Yeah. Oh, and again, again. another good defense by Clyde. I like that his D- he played it right in the corner there. Yeah, yeah. And and Clyde very smartly played optimal positioning. Yes. That Because he played it on top right of the collector, each side that right. uh, Trainer Chris would have played has a high chance to tag onto the mini And Pekka. Clyde also just outguessed. Yep. The mini peck on the other side. Yep. So Clyde is definitely ahead. Yeah, he was able to defend his collector and then attack the others, which is, of course, the, the, the combination you want to have, yep. right? Now Clyde can play a third collector, and you can see a big... Oh. Oh, wow. But that one's going down, but it's also a little late, like, in the sense that that collector was mostly yep. empty. So this collector is free because the miner, of course, was just committed to right. the left side. So Clyde has a collector for sure. If Trinidad Chris loses this next collector fight, then Clyde will be a collector up. Absolutely. And that's great for him, because he's playing a Lava Hound deck. Hey, and that's a great timing, by the way, that he played the Lava Hound right when Trainer Chris played the Collector, because that means Trainer mm-hmm. Chris didn't have the full Elixir bar yeah. to rush the other lane Inferno. and really oh, punish him. Ice Spirits against Inferno Tower? Nice. This setup Ooh. is very difficult to Inferno Tower right now. Oh, you're right. He doesn't even play it. He had it hovered, but he just couldn't couldn't do it. And it yep. gets in on the tower. Yep. I like that he was also kind of psyched out the Elixir Collector there, the mini yep. pack of one on the other side. Yep. This is really strong. And remember, Clyde, I mean, he still has that minor that he can play. Does he? Can he cycle to it? And the mini peck is going to stop that Inferno Tower from getting too chumped up. Oh my god, this is really tough. Here comes a miner. Now here's the princess. We talked about the princess survive. Oh, it does. It gets in there. Oh, oh good my timing. God, Unbelievable timing. That, look at that. The hole it is locked on. Even though it gets chopped up pretty quick, look how much so damage much they're damage. doing. And they don't die to zap either. The oh pups don't. Oh my god. That, I feel like Clyde, the, from the start of this game, Clyde had a strategy and... I, I can't imagine anybody executing it more perfectly than that. That I, was picture perfect. I love the addition of the uh, of, of the Ice Spirit to that combo because it allows you to kind of just... If, yeah. if they play something, even like other minions, your Ice Spirit freezing them right away and then letting your minions clean up almost just aces yeah. whatever they're doing. Trainer Chris is opting uh, just for the to let it go yeah. so we can move on to the next game. Yeah. Wow. That was just about the cleanest push I've ever perfect. seen. That miner couldn't have showed up a half second later, you and know, you know we should talk, exactly we need to. With Lava Hounds, we talk a lot about Pompeo, and, and he had shown us some of the cleanest Lava Hound play. I think this takes the cake for probably the single best push that I've seen in, in the Super Magical Cup. I mean, Cup. without a doubt, Clyde and Pompeo are the two Lava Hound 
Mm-hmm. Like standard bearers, right? Yeah. Like if Lava Hound had generals, it yeah. would be it would be those two as because yeah. they have very different lists and different styles, but both of them are, are the two most successful players with uh, with Lava Hound in tournaments. Mm-hmm. And you know, Clyde has really impressed me from the first time we watched him. I remember the very first time we saw Clyde, and we'll get to the match preview here. From the first time that we saw Clyde, I remember being like, what are you doing with some of these plays? Like, I don't understand what you're doing. And then going back and watching the replays, Clyde sees the game, mm-hmm. sees the full three, four minute uh, development of the game, I think better than most players. So he can do something that seems inefficient now, but what he's doing is he's shifting his cycle. He's trying to move around the sequencing of his cards yeah. in order to build up these pushes. And you yeah. saw, like, if he can put together that perfect Lava Hound push, we were like, oh my God, Trainer Chris couldn't even play Inferno yeah. Tower. <laughs> yeah. That lets you punch yeah. through those huge amounts of damage. Yeah. What do you think here, though? Do you think the giant poison is going to have the same effect? Giant poison. I mean, again, I will say this over and over today. The best card to use against Inferno Tower is minions. And it gets extremely complicated when you don't. But Clyde is very good at playing the barbarian giant combination. Kind of the Jason-esque barbarian surrounding the giant. Well, Jason did that kind of... He did that a few times. But Jason sure. likes to combine giant hog rider with barbarian. Yeah. Right? And that's kind of what Clyde has to do. The only thing about that is it is damn expensive to do that sure so we'll have to see i think clyde needs to play a little more precise i don't if clyde defends his collectors like he did in the last game he's gonna find very much success against trainer chris because elixir is is what what his deck is all about okay i mean clyde this might be something that i i would always say with clyde because he plays big bodies right and big bodies means elixir elixir management elixir efficient defense elixir saving and then also making sure that you have collectors yeah i definitely think that clyde's gonna have a harder time because besides not having minions putting barbs up front is like not the worst idea except that he's got zap fireball princess and mini pekka like zap plus mini pekka will wipe out those barbs and then suddenly the giant's exposed right and fireball just on its own right it's just yeah Fireball plus Princess is an incredibly cost-effective method. Especially if we see Clyde do something like play barbs to defend against minions, right? Like, yeah. play against, uh, I'm sorry, Miner. When the Miner comes down, if you play barbs to defend against the Miner and they all get Fireballed, you're going to mm-hmm. be real sad. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Clyde. So here we go. We've got Clyde versus... Trainer Chris, game two. Yeah. Clyde is up a game. Trainer Chris has to win in order to tie it up. Clyde has to win with his giant deck because he's already won one game with his Lava Hound deck. Mm-hmm. And we saw some expert defense against the Miner. Let's see if we can keep that up. Clyde will have to play his Elixir Collector yeah. and see if he can defend it uh, well enough to pump up. So already, something that kind of hurts Clyde right now, he did not have the Elixir Collector earlier than, right. than Trainer Chris. He needs to cycle the Skeletons. And look, just the fact that he wants to wait until 10 Elixir because it's a safer choice just further delays when he sure. plays his Collector. And here it comes. And the oh, other thing to what note, timing. the other thing to note is Clyde's other deck deck had the miner. So actually, Trader Chris's elixir collectors can only be challenged by poison. You're right. That's actually something I hadn't thought about until just now in the match. Is that, yeah, like the miner, even though you use it with the lava hound, it's perfect for those times when you're cycling between collectors yeah. because you can attack their collectors. It's kind with of them. a two stage game plan when yeah. you're playing lava hound. You don't even need to. Uh, uh, oh, we'll get the skeletons down. Yeah. Oh, nice. Nice. Like, he doesn't even really need. to... Oh God, that zap. Oh, wow. then the, he got a collector. He got a Pekka down on his wow. own, and that Pekka is actually going to not only absorb a lot of charge, but do a little bit of damage to it. And the princess is tagged on, but I don't think that. Oh, giant... didn't hit the tower. Oh, actually, the poison is doing really, really well, and the giant might make yeah. it to the tower. And there's no high damage units in in Trainer Chris's deck, and so this giant is going to get maybe two more swings out here. Very smart by uh, by uh, uh, Clyde to play the poison up there. I was like, why wouldn't you poison the tower? Don't you always poison the tower? Yeah. But then looking at it, a poison, a the entirety, all 10 seconds of poison, does one punch of giant damage. Yeah. So if you have to play it out of position in order to get your giant to the tower, the giant will make up that damage yeah. very quickly. Yeah, yeah. if you had to make a sacrifice and you thought that there was an opportunity to get your giant there, you yeah. want to get the giant there. And that's, it's, it's those little degrees that matter. Like, mm-hmm. I've noticed from playing in tournaments that it's so, like, you have to be perfect. You have to know mm-hmm. exactly how to get an extra 100, 200 damage out. Split barbs. Interesting choice. I like it because it helps. Well, that's actually weird. It's not going to be so great against the Inferno Tower. Okay, we'll see. I mean, uh, this. Okay, well, I'm getting concerned for Trainer Chris right now because this is. Wow, a the second giant is. Oh, oh, look okay. at that, though. There's no zap either, but the. the 
The but again, neither neither Giants particularly weak. But I think that Giants. Oh, it doesn't go to the other side. I was expecting it to maybe drag yeah. to the left. Yeah, this is this is tough. Trainer Chris is gonna really need to pull out all the stops because now he also has to make sure he handles the princess. Oh, 19 oh seconds my left. Oh god, and Clyde. I think this shot. Clyde, he's gonna take one more shot. Giant poison. Plus, uh, does that finish it? The, the, I mean, it does. he's gonna no. he's gonna. Defend. Oh, it doesn't. No, I mean nine because he's got the zap. You're right. He's got the zap. Yeah, he's got the zap. Wow, Clyde. Clyde two is O's. the best giant poison player. Oh yeah, that, absolutely. I mean, he's yeah, yeah. Like actually, I oh my god, wow. Clyde stomps through the field, takes wow. a 2-0 win, a, a pretty decisive 2-0 win in the finals. That I'd say that was very decisive. I mean, both of those games, it seemed like he was just in the driver's seat the entire time. Uh, congratulations, Clyde, taking it home. Wow. So what did you, what did you think about the meta today? Like overall, so let's take a look at some of the top decks, the top four players. We saw a lot. I I feel like just. From our, our spectating experience, first of all, I think sure. there was a lot more Furnace Miner Poison. I think yeah. that is kind of the de facto go-to, I don't want to play triple legendary, but I also want to play sure. a very successful, consistent tournament deck. And I think that showed up a lot. So, uh, slightly more, I think it was what, my, yeah, 